Was Muhammad a descendant of Ishmael? This is Daniel Amari from the Religion Research Institute. Uh, the content of this video is based on Dr. Rafat Amari's book, Islam in Light of History. We encourage you to go to rrimedia.org, rrimedia.org, to check out the articles by Dr. Rafat Amari and to check out the book, Islam in Light of History. Muslims claim that Islam is the religion of Abraham and Ishmael. They trace Islam to the God of Abraham. They claim that Muhammad is descendant of Ishmael. Why this is important to them? Muslims base the religion on their claim that Islam can be traced to the monotheistic religion of Abraham. This monotheism was founded by Abraham, transmitted eventually to Muhammad, who was a descendant of Ishmael. Therefore, to Muslims, these claims constitute the foundation of Islam that gives it credibility and truth. What Muslims believe about Ishmael and Abraham? Well, Muslims' belief concerning Ishmael and Ab Muhammad are based on what is found in the religious text. The religious text consists of the Quran, the Hadith of Muhammad or the sayings of Muhammad, and the various narrations found in the other Islamic texts, such as Sirat ibn Hisham. The following are the most accepted claims by Muslims. Number one, the claims that by the Quran. The Quran claims that Abraham and Ishmael built the temple of Kaaba in Mecca. And also, the Quran claims that the Arabs are descendants of Abraham. Muhammad, in his hadith or sayings, claimed that he is the descendant of Ishmael, that he is physically a copy of Abraham, that Arabs are descendants of Abraham. The Islamic tradition uh, to support the Quran and to support Muhammad claims uh, stated the following. They stated that Ishmael and his Egyptian mother settled in Mecca, that Ishmael and Abraham built the temple Kaaba in Mecca, that they founded a monotheistic religion there. They utilized a winged camel to reach Mecca. Ishmael married a woman from Mecca. Ishmael's sons lived in Mecca and Yemen. The Ishmaelites lived there since Ishmael days. Muhammad is a descendant of Ishmael. Muhammad is a descendant of Nabiyoth, the firstborn of Ishmael. Nabiyoth lived in Mecca, then Yemen, then Mecca. Muhammad can be traced to an ancestor called Adnan. That ancestor is a descendant of Ishmael. This is part one of the series, and in this series we're going to be examining these claims from the perspective of the Bible, history, archaeology, and Islamic sources. So number one, we're going to look at biblical accounts of Ishmael and the Ishmaelites. The Bible states that Ishmael lived in the, in the wilderness of Paran, the desert of Paran, in Sinai. Paran is located in the northeastern part of Sinai, close to the southern borders of Canaan. Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, who was an Egyptian, when she fled from Abraham with her son Ishmael to the wilderness of Shur, the Lord told her that Ishmael is going to live in the presence of his brethren. His brethren, like Isaac, lived in, in, in Canaan, and Esau lived in in south of Jordan, as Ishmael lived in Sinai in Paran. There are very important indications in the Bible about the location of Paran. For example, uh, Paran location was further confirmed by Moses. When, before Moses actually uh, wanted to go to the Promised Land, the land of Canaan, he sent 12 spies from the land of Paran, Paran in Sinai when he was about to actually go to, to the land of Canaan. Furthermore, Ishmael attended the funeral of Abraham. If, if, if Ishmael was living in Mecca, he would need several months to actually arrive to the funeral, which would have, which would have been very late. But the Bible says that Ishmael actually attended the, the, the funeral of, of uh, his father Abraham. 
The location of Ishmael is also indirectly deduced from the following facts. The fact that, that Ishmael married an Egyptian woman and that Esau married the daughter of Ishmael. The Bible states that Ishmael died in the presence of his brethren. This phrase indicates that he actually lived there all his life. Now, one important question that uh, people ask, didn't God promise that Ishmael is going to be a great nation? Well, the Bible also gives us a definition of what a great nation is. For example, the Bible mentions the King Gerar and the, the fact that basically King Gerar had a one city, but he described himself as a, a nation. Uh, when the Israelites came out of Egypt, were numbered about one million people. And they were described by the Bible as a great nation. Now, when we, when we come to the book of Judges in the Bible, it describes an alliance of the Ishmaelites and the Midianites. And it describes them as follows. Numerous as locusts, and their camels are without numbers. So according to the Bible, the promise that Ishmael will be a great nation has been fulfilled. The fact that the number of the Ishmaelites became huge in Sinai. And it was fulfilled in the fact in his 12 large tribe. This is Daniel Amari from the Religion Research Institute. Thank you.